Mrs. Funk's lesson inspired me to try something new. I haven't actually tried doing the Georgia O'Keeffe lesson using an animal skull. So I'm gonna be drawing this one. So to start with, I divided my sketchbook in half so that I could try some different things with this skull because I haven't done it before. Um, but your picture should be taking up your whole piece of paper. So for this size, what I did to begin with is just figure out for that big of a rectangle, how big should the skull be? And then how big will these antlers be? And skulls are symmetrical. And so as I'm making this, I might want to give myself really light guidelines so that I know um, that the eyes line up and that the nose lines up. So I'm kind of like just really slowly looking at the outside edge of this and I'm moving my pencil as slow as my eyes and then I notice that it comes very, this becomes much longer and skinnier. And then a trick when you're trying to draw something symmetrical because you know, one trick that we've done in the classroom is to use black paper and white chalk, and then we fold it in half, and you get to see the other side drawn for you. Another trick is to turn a drawing upside down, and I'm kind of sitting off to an angle, so I need to look at this straight here. But when you turn something upside down, you stop looking at it the same way you were, and you might notice um, how lines are just slightly different. So I was noticing that that was a little bit crooked. If this is my center line. So I'm gonna work on the outline before I start. And this one bumps out more, but maybe I want this one to match that side. So before I start doing any of those extra details, <clears throat> I'm gonna try and get this out, outside edge to be as close as I can. Okay, now I'm gonna flip it back the same way because I'm looking at the picture like this. So some of you that turned in bones last week, it gave me two eye holes and, and left it. But if I look close at this picture, there are um, some cracks that go down the middle. So if we look close at this picture again, we see several different lines in the skull itself. Because it is still a symmetrical Drawing it might be handy to do that first line first, and then I see lines coming down from the eyes. So I'm gonna kind of do them at the same time. I see a line here, and it might even be, it's not even like a really straight line. They're kind of a jaggedy line in this one. And I know not everybody chose this skull, but look at the one that you did. It's just like the flowers. These are general ideas for several different things, okay. And here's this, perfect. And then I kind of see some dark marks here. I'm not even sure what that is. And some dark things here, but that'll be, you know, the, there's more than just white to this when I go to color it. So if I can get some of those designs in there, some of those extra details I see. All right. So now when I look at the horns, maybe this will be something I do as I'm coloring it. Not sure if it's horns or antlers, but I almost see there's a shifting, there's lines on these antlers, first of all, but then there's a shifting line that kind of goes on these and it's a little different, um, almost looks like it rotates. And then there are lines that go like this to it, but I might put those in as a color instead of drawing them in with pencil. I've been shading um, this skull and the first thing I did was to look and see what colored pencils do I have. So I found gray, slate, brown, tan, black, and red brown in my box. And um, as I'm using these, I decided I kind of like the look of the brown because I feel like it warms it up a little bit. And so as you're shading, you're not really worrying about shading the whole thing because we want it to basically stay white. What I'm doing it's just shading the edges a little bit so that we can see like this sticks out and then this would kind of bend. So just like our tree, you make it darker on the edges, but just barely darker because it's really white. So shading a shadow on white stays pretty light. 
here too. So I've got a really soft touch and then just blending it out a little bit so it's more than just a line. And what's cool about colored pencils is you can erase. So I can erase that a little bit. When I was shading the crack here, I um, just took my pencil and I did brown first and then black. I'm just doing kind of a wavy line. And I'm noticing like here, I think this is actually a hole. So if I color that in a little darker and this side's nice and dark, that's gonna give me some pop. And see, I already colored this eye. So what I did is first I color brown. And that doesn't really go back into space. See the difference? So that looks like a hole, but this one looks like it could be just on the surface of the skull. So then if I take the black, and I especially wanna do this edge that's closest to us and then blend that out so it's not a line but more of a shadow then that's going to give it some more pop too and then I use the black to emphasize some of that texture I see up around here so to do the um, the horns what I did is first I just colored the whole horn brown just to kind of give it a base because this is the darker the darkest spot of our drawing and then I'm noticing that there's a lot of texture on I don't know if these are horns or antlers but there's a lot of texture so there we go so there's my base coat and then I'm gonna just zoom down a little bit so when we're looking at this um, if I look at this side, it kind of goes up, down, up, up, down, up. So I'm seeing like these lines moving. And in art, um, if you are, like here's something I was looking at here. If I just keep making this curved line, do you see how it's kind of building up the form of this? So it kind of looks like um, there's almost like worms here and then they're kind of like getting bigger and smaller. And it's all just because of this curved contour line. This is kind of a fun thing to do for art anyway, just to do a drawing like this. So, but do you see how this is starting to build up? And here's like where it changed. So this line is going curving down and then these lines are curving up, see that? So if I notice that there is kind of a ridge here and here, and then if I'm looking at those lines, it kind of goes up, down, and I'm just going to keep that going and eventually it's going to build up the texture of that antler just like we see it and then it kind of twists and turns so that um, this whole area just kind of goes off to the side bend this down a little bit so eventually here, this line does, just like I did, had in those curve lines, it's gonna curve and we're gonna see it curve this way to see that horn bending away from us. It's gonna help. There we go. So to make that a little bit more exciting, I'm gonna add a black line along with it. And the same thing, up, down, up. Before I started coloring the background, I looked back at Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings and I see lots of different ideas. Um, the ones with the landscapes have mountains or water, but uh, it all kind of has shades of blue. Okay, I'm done with my samples. So I did one with just a plain blue background and then remembered to color the holes in the nostrils because that would be an open space. And then the other one I did the kind of the cloudy sky with mountains below. Have fun finishing your drawing of bones.